what it's asking you to do is factor this problem completely. Completely. To factor completely. So what I'd like to do is, to do this problem, I'd like to just kind of um, reiterate or try to think about what does it really mean to factor something completely? And the best, I think, re the best way to think about this would be to think about like a number. For instance, look, let's look at the number. Um, bu -bu -bu. I like 12. I have to use 12 again. I use that for the other classes, but that's OK. So let's use the number 12. If you guys remember, we did factoring completely, or you have previously done factoring completely in previous math classes. But what we called factoring completely of a number, what we call is prime factorization. And to do that, we did the little factor tree. You guys remember doing like little factor trees? Right? You just kind of pick a factor, and then you keep on breaking it down. And what we do is we break a number down to its prime factors, numbers that cannot be factored any further. Right? So the prime, the conf prime factorization of 12 is 3 times 2 times 2. Right? So do you guys agree here that 3 times 2 times 2 is the, sa is the equivalent of 12? Yes? Do you also agree that 6 is a factor of 12 because 6 evenly divides into 12? Right? It evenly divides into 12 two times. Does that make sense? Yes? No. So what, what's important about this, though, is 6 we know is a factor of 12 because 6 divides into 12 two times. Is it OK, then, to rewrite this as a product? 6 times 2 equals 12? Right? Does that kind of make sense? You can take your, so if you have a factor, a number that divides into 12, that quotient is also a factor, right? And if you multiply your two quotients, you would get back your polynomial. Does it make sense with numbers? Because all we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is doing the same stuff, but with polynomials, OK? So just remember, if you have a factor and you divide that factor into your number, that answer is also a factor. And as long as you multiply those two factors, as long as you multiply those two factors, you're going to get back your original number. Okay? So what they did was they told us they, we have a factor. They said, hey, x minus 2 is a factor. So that tells you when x minus 2, when you divide x minus 2 into this polynomial, you're going to have a remainder of 0, right? x minus 2 evenly divides into it because it's, they said it was a factor. Just like 6 is a factor of 12. 6 evenly divides into 12 with the remainder of 0, correct? OK. So let's prove then that it, even, that it factors. So you could use long division or synthetic division. Since my factor or my divisor is linear, I'm going to use synthetic division. So just remember, um, when you have your factor, we always can set our factors equal to 0. And by doing that, we can then find the what? What can you find when you set your factor equal to 0 and solve for x? You call it the zeros. Does everybody agree with me that if x minus 2 is the factor, then x equals 2 is the 0, right? The solution, the x-intercept. So when using synthetic division, I'm going to put the 0 on the outside. And then I take the coefficient of all my terms of my um, dividend. Just remember. When you're doing your homework and previous homework, make sure that your dividend is in standard form, right? And make sure for any missing term that you have, you're including 0. So if, like, if I didn't have an x squared here, I would include 0x squared, right? Yes? OK. So I take the coefficients here. So there's a 1 there. So I have 1, negative 3, negative 10, and then positive 24. All right, so I'll just go through synthetic division one more time, just nice and slowly. First number we always bring down. That's like the freebie. Then we multiply in the diagonals. 2 times 1 is, or 1 times 2 is 2. And then we add on the verticals. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Multiply on the diagonals. Negative 1 times 2 is going to be a negative 2. Uh, negative 10 plus negative 2 is going to be a negative 12. Mul add on the on verticals. Multiply on the diagonals. Negative 24, 0. So that is our remainder. So does that prove that x minus 2 is a factor? Yeah. Right? If it, what, if, it had a, if it had a remainder, then it's just a divisor, right? It doesn't evenly divide, but you can still divide into it. It just doesn't evenly divide. It's like saying, does 5 divide into 12? Yeah, of course 5 divides into 12. It just doesn't divide in there evenly, right? 5 goes into there two times with the remainder of 2, right? 
So, but this case, since this evenly divides, x minus 2 is a factor. And the quotient is also a factor. factor. This is really, really important for you guys to understand. So how can we write this then as a polynomial? Remember, that's your constant, that's your linear, and that's your quadratic. So my quotient is x squared minus x minus 12, right? But this is a factor, correct? So would it make sense then if I could take this factor times this factor? And what would those two factors equal? My original, my original fun, uh, equation, right? But what is the question asking us today? The question is asking us to factor completely. Ladies and gentlemen, can I remember when we had 12? Is this factored completely? No, you could break down 6 again, right? Can I factor x squared minus x minus 12 further? Yes, of course you can. Now, is there any, any further factoring that I can do? Is there any further factoring I can do? No. So guess what? That is what your answer should look like. That is your answer factored completely. So from what, 20, 21 through 24, that's what you're doing for each of these. Okay. Now, I'm going to go a little step above just because, it, yes, Michaela. I factored this into this. So I said, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 12, add to give you negative 1? That was negative 4 and positive 3. So I factored down the trinomial into two binomials. Um, uh, so what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go a little bit of extension. Because ladies and gentlemen, in reality, I don't really know what the question is going to be on the test, right? The question could be on the test is saying, hey, I have a factor and a polynomial. Can you find all of the real zeros? So what if you did all of this information? Can you find the zeros from this? What do we do from factors to go to zeros? How do you go from a factor to a zero? Yes, John? Yeah, you set it equal to zero. Instead of it equaling y or what the function is, you set it equal to zero, right? Then you can apply the zero product property. So as long as you can find the factors, ladies and gentlemen, you can now find the zeros. So the solution set of this is negative 3, 2, and 4. I'm not going to show solving them, but hopefully everybody understands how I got to those. I just solve for x for each one. Is that OK if I skip a step? Or does anybody not understand where I got the solution set? Is everybody OK? Nobody's talking up. So I'm assuming then we're OK and just half asleep. Yes? OK. So now, on further, on further than this, what if the question said, I don't want you to just find the zeros. I want you to graph it. Well, OK. Well, first of all, how many zeros? How many solutions do we have? Three. How many are we supposed to have? Three, right? Because the degree is three. So if I was going to ask you even to graph this, these are real solutions, right? So real solutions represent what? X-intercepts. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So since they're all real solutions, would you guys agree with me they represent um, real or x-intercepts? Yes. OK, cool. Um, the next thing is let's go back and look at multiplicity. Now remember multiplicity on your quiz that we're about to go over. Ooh, that's what I forgot to do. Um, on your quiz, multiplicity, remember, is the power of each factor, right? Each linear factor. These are all linear factors. What is the multiplicity of each of my zeros? One. So we know that the graph is going to cross at each one, right? It's not going to bounce. The last thing we need to do to graph is we need to understand m behavior. And this just knows m behavior. Remember, m behavior goes through what the degree is and what the leading coefficient is. Since the degree is odd and your leading coefficient is positive, if you guys go and look at your notes for m behavior, you would know that the graph is going to fall left and rise right. Okay, Just look at your notes. Odd degree, positive leading coefficient. I'll talk about this more in your quiz, but that's something you guys are going to make sure you need to know. So now all I got to do is connect my two m behaviors going through the zeros. Boom. And there's an example of a sketch of what the graph would look like. Yes? And so how do we, so if it's an even multiplicity that it bounces? It would have bounced, yep. Questions? Yes? When you have an odd multiplicity, if this was 1, 
three, five, seven. That just means it crosses. Okay. So it just crosses, it goes through. Everybody is okay. Everybody's not okay. <laughs> 